3, Wednesday, December 4th, Deerfield Parks and Recreation Commission. Start with a review of the November meeting minutes. Do we have, has everybody looked those over? I get two small comments on those. Okay, sure. Um, one was um, under the financial update was possibly adding 10,000 in, in budget for a special events that don't generate enough revenue. I think that actually should read more in uh, possibly introducing a warrant article that would do, do that or you know ask for that money. So it wouldn't be part of the, the budget budget and we don't even know if this department has a specific budget yet. And then the only other thing Dwight was um, in, in your report, the financial report about needing to cut back on staff, um, I just wanted to challenge that a little bit that um, the, the note was I believe made that the, that department is still profitable that it's making it's making money um, it, the, the definitely the, uh, the the payroll expenses the payroll expenses are absolutely up but um, just the, the, the commentary that um, we still need to look at this a little bit more and not make any you know rash judgments as to how we fix that I mean that that was what I believe we discussed at the earlier meeting that may be omitted here that's why I'm, I'm not discussing it now but is that hoping that that could be amended to to do something that says like although expenses were up for the after school program um, as a standalone program it is still making operating at a profit okay can we get that uh, you want that into the minutes and hey, Jack, right yeah. to amend the minutes to, okay. to reflect what I believe the discussion was at the last meeting okay any uh, comments on um, one thing one thing I had and maybe it's just uh, needs clarification is that under the fall soccer review it mentions that uh, nets will be replaced next year I don't necessarily recall um, that nets were going to be replaced on soccer goals uh, next year especially with the nets being new over at Hartford Brook with the purchase of all the new goals Okay, I think I asked the question about that, and somebody responded. Maybe it was Jeff that uh, the netting, the nets down here are fine. It's just they, they needed uh, some more, uh, needed to be secured better to okay. the uh, goals. Yeah, I think you mentioned right. like zip ties or something, something yeah, easy right. to just keep yeah. them yeah. in place. Okay, okay yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So it wasn't replacement. It's just better securing the ones across the street. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Minutes. Uh, everyone okay with uh, those amendments and changes to the minutes? Please say aye. 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 Nay. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Terry. Financial update. Uh, Eric has been kind enough to uh, assume this responsibility going forward, so I'm going to turn that over to her right now. I might have one thing to say at the end, but uh, it's all it's all hers. Okay, I'm passing out a handout that I put together, which is similar to what Dwight has been reporting. It just it looks a little bit different. I consolidated um, the previous month uh, onto one page. So just to take a look at this, we have um, through November of this year, we are um, currently at a balance of $81,000 in the fund, which <coughs> is um, compared to the October balance, which is all the way over to the right, the second column from the right, which was $71,000, $71,900. So we, we uh, gained about $9,000 this month as to where we were last month. And then I, I tried to put some explanations down at the bottom of the November um, month gains, the gains and the losses, and then where we are in a position year to date. So for the month of November, we had a $9,200 increase to the overall balance uh, due mainly to after-school programs, $8,300, <coughs> the, 
youth basketball, $2,300, probably just a timing of when the registrations come in. Um, and then trips. I wasn't sure what trips was, but maybe, Nick, you have mm. some insight into that. Yeah, I guess that's the next uh, topic on the agenda. It was that the, the van. Bus. Okay, the bus all right. Yeah. That's what I thought, but I wasn't 100% sure on that mm -hmm. one. And then some areas we've been talking about, um, the administration uh, piece, uh, about $5,000 loss, um, youth baseball. Again, that was probably, I think there was a, a fee that was paid, $1,000 fee. Correct, yeah, you, it's you the say due, that? annual yeah, dues. Yeah, the dues, so again, a timing issue. And then um, <coughs> fall soccer, probably just some carryover from the prior season. So that's kind of the position for the month, just so you can get some insight as to what happened for the month. And then year to date, over on the right hand side, um, overall uh, loss of $35,600 for the year. Um, but I broke down the areas that are profitable, the areas that are loss, losses, and, and just kind of broke out <coughs> those, just so it's easier for people to kind of put their eyes on it. After school program obviously is the biggest area of profit at $46,000. Youth basketball, and you can see the rest, hoops classic, youth soccer, the co-ed softball, dances, senior programs, adult yoga, and the three and three program kind of from high to low. And then in the areas for losses, we have the administration. I, I lumped all the costs related to the administration together. And we have facil the facility and vehicle maintenance and repairs, and the capital improvements, summer day camp, <coughs> old home day, and special events I lumped together, equipment facility, maintenance and repairs, and youth baseball and softball. So I'm just really starting to get a handle on this, so I apologize if I don't have a whole lot of detail, but... Um, That's a real nice report, thanks. And you did that pretty quickly, too. <laughs> Yeah, and I did, I did um, connect with Pete, so he's going to include me on the um, financials that he sends out every month now going forward, and I told him I may call him and ask questions. So. Oh, sure. Yeah, he's always available. Yeah. Anybody have any Thank questions? Thank you to Dwight for your guidance. As well. Looks good. Pleasure. This is awesome. Really nice. Captures a lot in one spot and kind of measures the health of, the financial health of where we're, you know, where we're at. And then, Dwight, you had some more to add on the labor. Yeah, just a couple things. Uh, Erica mentioned uh, the fund balance increased by over $9,000 this month. It was only the third month this year in which that happened, so it's a pretty positive uh, thing right there. Uh, the other thing that I had was um, in looking at how much more we spent on FICA, Medi, and retirement this year compared to last year at this time. It's another $3,500, which represents about 42,000 in payroll or about 45,000 in total payroll costs over the previous year. So I understand what Terry's saying, but I don't want us to lose sight of that. Uh, obviously the after school program is uh, up considerably from last year, so that's tremendous. I think the big area again was the summer day camp so all I guess I want to say is we really need to be able to forecast and schedule as well as we possibly can with the labor uh, and just react when we have things we need to react to. And also, you know, some of this is not just additional hours that were spent, but it's an increase in the wages, so we can't lose sight of that either. You know, so there might be some areas where we do need to increase some of our fees because that's substantial I mean additional 45,000 this year that's the difference between a $35,000 profit and a $10,000 gain so it's very labor you know I guess it doesn't matter what business you're in it's a really important line item so I think we should all always think about that going forward anything else on the financials Erica, thanks. Nice. Bus update. Okay, uh, not a whole lot to say on this. It's just uh, the fact that it was sold. Um, 
Board of Selectmen uh, accepted our recommendation to accept sealed bids for it, and it uh, ended up selling at uh, $5,678. Um, so that is now not an asset that we have for the department. Um, so figured that was worth uh, definitely updating on camera. Um, you know, also substantial, uh, we didn't move the bus at all in the year that we had it. And uh, especially going into winter, it cost us $1,200 over the six months uh, where we had to keep it plugged in last year. So um, it was pretty imperative that we uh, moved off of it if it wasn't going to start delivering some value back to the department and uh, we were able to do that before the winter so that was a small victory yeah nice real nice and you recovered a substantial piece of the investment so that's right that's good after a year for sure nice so was that money reflected in in these uh it, numbers? Uh, it was deposited back into the trips line that trips line so you'll see one positive amount of uh fixed 56.79 and that is directly a reflection of the sale of the bus okay just have a question on that should it go into the vehicle line that's where it came out of yeah i'm not sure how it got allocated to the trips but we can definitely move that over talk to Pete about it anybody have any concerns about that seems like that's where it should go since that's where it was paid for from yeah i agree yeah okay all right so you can talk to pete i got it okay thanks thanks nick good job all right bylaws update Formal vote. Does everybody have a copy of that in front of them? I think I had everybody with that one. <coughs> Wait, Katie <coughs> asked me to just to speak to him real quick. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. you're the, yeah, you're the mayor. The, um, in her absence, but um, I think they're done. I think they've been circulated among all the leadership in town that would, would have an interest in what they're what they say. Yeah. Um, we're essentially here to assist and to help and to, to volunteer. Um, the one of the things um, about this were uh, ten members plus a member from the the, the uh, board of selectmen um, would would was what what our current situation is. Um, we're looking to keep a minimum of seven members ongoing to make sure we have reasonable repre representation from the community. Um, but we can tweak that as we need to, um, as we feel, you know, who's interested in as we go through time. Um, the, um, the other thing um, we did, we created a document early on about the subcommittees, and we put that, we fold that into this document, so it just it will exist here. Um, and as we'll talk about that, I guess, in a little bit, the assignments of those subcommittees. But it is... Um, we'll, we're looking to require that all members participate on at least one subcommittee. I think that's what that, um, um, so that's part of the, the, the expectation if, you, if you're part of this group. Um, we got to keep minutes and do all of the official stuff to satisfy um, RSA 91A1. Um, we're here to advise and, and offer any of our expertise as we can but still at the end of the day it's still the the the, uh, the leadership of the the director and um, um to, to run the department um thought there was one other thing we don't get we don't get paid for our services which is good because that also protects us because we'll if we're volunteers and we have some um relief from litigation um I think that's the, the gist of it anyway. So um, I, I, I don't know if I can. I guess I can make a motion to. Well, those, well the other interesting thing is because of our number tonight, if we were to amend these, we're supposed to have two thirds of the full sitting commission present. We're not technically amending them, we're adopting them. I mean, I. Majority. We want to get this done and move it forward. Okay, so I'll make a motion then to. <coughs> To well, yeah, to to accept the bylaws as written and become the, our working document moving forward. Uh, so before the meeting, I'd actually sent an email to Katie about something in this, to the possible change before okay. getting approved. I didn't know she wasn't going to be here tonight, uh, so I don't know if we want, if you want me to bring that up and I can talk to us about it. Um, it's in Article Seven, Section. 1D, uh, 
where it's talking about the removal of an officer or a member. Uh, Nick and I had a conversation about the quantities for, for these uh, numbers that are set here. Um, should pattern continue where we don't have a meeting in July due to the holiday, um, depending on how it falls? Uh, we kind of discussed and thought that these numbers could be somewhat high. We would allow an uh, officer or a member to miss more than 50% of the meetings, and we didn't know what the board thought about that and whether or not that was kind of high or you could I don't know if it's necessarily punitive you know whatever you know it's more of a guideline to say you know you need to come to the meetings and participate and if you don't we don't have to create a rule you know far that we can hold you to the rule and say you miss four or you miss you know you miss you miss three and then you come and, and jump in and do <coughs> one over the course of a year you're gone for six at the same time, somebody could suffer some some significant, you know, personal hardship, and you say, "Well, we don't want to accept your resignation or, or whatever because you, we know you're going to get through this, and then you're going to be a regular participant. You've been doing this for a long time." Um, so, so what what would you think would be a better a better number? I guess is I don't know. We would kind of thought you know three in a row, or and then uh, in a calendar year somewhere between four to five. I don't know. I mean, it's not much of a big difference, but we just thought that 50% seemed more than 50% could be high. But it's whatever everybody thinks if it's worth adjusting or not worth adjusting. I guess I don't know if you want to like look at it as you know you get somebody with three in a row because you want them to not be you know if if you have somebody um, that's not here a lot. It, they're going to get our attention, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you don't want to make it two. You don't want to make it three two because that could easily happen. Like Katie's not here tonight; she was, she was, you know, was an issue, um, and last minute couldn't come. Mm -hmm. So if she missed the last <coughs> one because she was planned, and she misses the next one. Do we really want to have a discussion and say, you know, well, Katie, we're a little concerned about your attendance and you're not your participation. I think this is more to show a level of of. You know, a, a high enough level that you're not interested in in being part of this, so we might want to go ahead and do something. I mean, this is my thought. I because when I when I when I wrote this a long time ago, I I, I kind of looked at this number and I said, well, you don't want it, you don't want it too low because people can get caught in that, mm -hmm. and then they won't take it seriously, and nobody will ever you do. Well, you don't want it too high because then the person will never understand it, but. If you miss half of them in the course of a year intermittently, you still we still might not ask you to leave because you 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 might have good cause. And, 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 um. Okay, can I ask uh, who would like to leave it at four and six? I, I kind of think the way it's written is is good. I like the four and six. I'm okay with. It. I think C would still cover it anyways. If it became an issue, you could still with that two thirds vote remove. Yep. It was appropriate at that time. I think there's also in that D anyways consideration will be given to members who show good cause for their absences. So you know if somebody really is in a hardship situation and you know couldn't attend for that number, it would give us some leeway. Okay, we have a motion then to. I also, I mean, depending on their involvement in our activities, like if they're volunteering and they're going to the events and participating. I just kind of think it makes sense to leave it as it is. It's like Terry said, not too high, not too low. It's pretty much right in the middle. So, and we can control that too. So if someone's going to everything and you know ladling out the potato salad and coaching and sweeping the gym and you know doing all that stuff, um, and their their ability to attend the meetings, you know that that's a that's that's something we can we have, you know we have the authority through this document to to make a judgment call on. So. Okay. All right. Motion on the floor. Motion to accept. Uh, Need a second on the motion. Thank you. I'll second it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the typo. Yeah. That was Jeff on a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> That's good. Terry, thanks so much for your work yes, on that. Well done, yeah, Terry. Nice job, Terry. And just so you know, Katie is the keeper of this document at this time, so she has the electronic file, and um, we'll have her show that the date, you know, that has been adopted as of this point in time. Okay. Super. All right, it's 2020 DPR subcommittee assignments. 
Who's going to speak to that? I originally thought that was going to be Katie. It was, um, and I don't actually have the document in front of me either, but she had them all laid out as uh, the last time we'd gone over them. They were all kind of spread out with who was um, assigned to what based on who volunteered for what. Um, so I think that was, oh, and Kevin has it right here. Um, so yeah, I don't know how to attack this. What we have for core areas of the subcommittees or core subcommittees, if you will. Um, we have them listed at after school and summer camp as one. Uh, baseball and softball is its own thing. Basketball, um, separate from the next one, which is hoops, Hoop Classic. Um, old, old Home Day has its own. Uh, senior and adult programming are lumped into one. And then special events, which include tailgate trick-or-treat, winter carnival, sit with Santa, Veterans Day, etc., all under one umbrella. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different core areas for subcommittees um, to kind of assign members to, I guess. I'll take that. Do we need any other committees? Are you, Erica, are you, should we consider Erica like a financial committee? I mean, if that's something, you know, you can do a lot of, that's, you can do a lot of work there, you know, do you necessarily have, if you have a requirement to do at least one, do you also have to do another one because it's not on the list? So we can create and dissolve committees as we see fit. Fine with me. You good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say we add that financial. <coughs> okay. So I guess perhaps I should read the uh, subcommittee members' names that go with these areas, and we can discuss that further. After school clubhouse and summer camp. Tom, Du Bois, Terry, and myself. Baseball and softball, myself, Terry, Tom again. Basketball, Nate, Terry, and of course Tom Buffington's not with us anymore on the committee. I'll scratch him out. Hoops Classic, Nate, Terry, and Brian Gerard. Old Home Day, whoops. <laughs> no Tom, no Amy. We have an opening. Senior and adult programming, Brian Gerard and Ernie, we have another opening. Special events, uh, ditto on Old Home Day, Tom, Buffington, and Amy. So we're going to scratch them. Okay, so that's what we have. Uh, after school clubhouse and summer camp, again, Tom, Terry, and myself. Uh, any Comments, questions, concerns there? We, have, we don't have anything for soccer. Soccer, soccer belongs on there. Can, can I ask what does the subcommittee do? <clears throat> In the bylaws. I know, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I, do you guys meet or? Sometimes, but. Are you just responsible for the programming and? Well, responsible for being a liaison, I think, between the commission and the particular activity. Uh, so it's people that pay a little more attention to that specifically and work with Kevin and Nick on it. And, uh, you know, in the cases, well, all of these things <coughs> necessitate some sort of a presence at these events and planning for these different things. <coughs> Okay, again, baseball and softball, myself, Terry, and Tom. Basketball, we have Nate and Terry, just the two. Uh, I was going to drop out of basketball, if that's all right. Okay. Can you merge? Does it make sense to merge Hoop Classic and basketball? Mm. Just because they're the one and the same? It's the same well, sport. Though they're, Hoops Classic is... It's a basketball event, it's a, right? It's a, bas it's a revenue driver for, through basketball. Right. Yeah, but the other sports don't have their own exclusive term. It's a huge event, so I would I would stick with personally. My recommendation would be to keep it out separate. But yeah, kind of yeah. agree. I mean, it is all in all 
it's the same it's sport, but but it's the same parents that are like your basketball parents are going to be a parent your basketball teams it's that do all the support of that like soccer's not supporting it right baseball's not supporting it it's all the same people so it's like just have it as something that that can that group works with because i was just thinking base, basketball coaches basketball teams basketball parents basketball everything why create the two work streams rather than just have basketball committee deals with that but then also has the other group just to keep continuity within the you you could potentially have the hoops classic without any Deerfield teams yeah it's that big it's true no, and, but who's but all the volunteers we're going to are all a basketball team so I get it could be big enough to do its own thing but it, we have always asked for volunteers from basketball teams and coaches and players and so I was just thinking continuity between the two. I think workload's another thing, too. I mean, it's just looking at the different sports. I know you, I get your point about having the same people, but if there are other basketball people that want to join the subcommittee, it's, it gives them a chance to do so, you know? I still need it for both. Um, yeah, so just uh, personally, I'm saying I'm on both basketball events, but I'm going to withdraw from those now just my winters are really changed my family situation is a little different okay how do we want to deal with this do we want to uh, publish this and throw it out to the entire group and uh, see if we have people who will step up and fill these spots because like right now we've just got Nate in basketball uh, we don't have anyone for old home day we've just got Brian Gerard for senior adult programming and we have no one on special events <coughs> Get Eric on financial and Jeff. I assume you're still interested in the soccer side of things. Yeah, I can still help with that. I'm sorry. I said I can still help with that. Okay. And Eric had helped with it before. She was a member. <laughs> Foot's all. Well, what do you think? So, yeah, so that's what a subcommittee did. That was a lot of it. That's actually what started all the subcommittees. Right, and that's like we helped get the futsal program off and spearhead that. <coughs> Do you think it's a good idea to send this out to the membership, see if other people sure, yeah. will yep. sign on? Okay. Is that something you can do? Yep. Send an email right. out. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, I guess we'll revisit that. Is our goal to have three people per? Or is it two? Like, what's the target? Just be able to send that out. Probably want to have at, at least, least two, one. maybe three would About be nice. About us two, and then I know that each committee needs one of you guys as a commission member um, and then whatever we have extra on top of that is gravy I guess yeah. I don't think anyone will refuse the help you don't want to get too confused with too many people but right. you know old home day if there were four people on that I think you would they right. would be used wisely and productively right. yeah. you put me down for old home day and special events no. um, you sure? thanks Jeff All right, uh, basketball update. All right, so I'll try to make my bullet points uh, as quick as possible here. All right, so um, real quick, registration numbers for pre-K, K, we had 32 registrants. First and second grade, we're at 39. Uh, both of those are the highest or biggest group that we've had to date since I've been here. Um, going into my third season, being at Deerfield, uh, grades three through six, we got 68 uh, registrants. Uh, out of those 68, I do have to uh, do three refunds. Um, two of them for not having a seventh and eighth grade girls team in town. We did not have enough registrants. And another one for um, uh, they have moved out of town, uh, so they are no longer with us since they have registered. So I need to, I'll get those processed uh, as soon as possible. Uh, practices have started. They've been going on for. Well, been scheduled for about two weeks now, two, two and a half weeks. Uh, unfortunately, a couple got postponed due to snow and, and no practices during Thanksgiving, but they have been started. All the teams have been split and determined, uh, so we're, we're moving forward at a good pace. Uh, jamborees are uh, scheduled for Saturday, December 14th. Uh, third and fourth grade boys are going to be in Northwood. Third and fourth 
and fifth and sixth grade girls are going to be in Barrington. Uh, they volunteered to host uh, the two smallest divisions because we only had three locations that were willing to, to hold the Jamboree. And then five and sixth grade boys are going to be in Deerfield. Uh, schedules got emailed out to coaches last night, so that information is getting administered to their uh, team's parents. Uh, regular season game schedules should hopefully be ready by the end of this week and get those emailed out. Regular season games don't start until uh, Saturday, January 4th, so after the new year, uh, based on the league's new timeline. So that gives a little bit more time to solidify everything and make sure everything is, is accurate before it gets sent out. Our photo day is also going to be on Saturday, January 4th. Uh, the photo day schedule is still um, being worked on and to be determined, but Saturday, January 4th will be the um, our photo day. It's also the first day of our pre-K and first and second grade clinic. So, you know, they'll come in, they'll get their shirt that day, so they'll be nice and new, and then they'll be able to put it right on for their photo and no worries about it getting lost, eaten by the dog or, or whatever. Um, See, uh, our uniform replacements have been ordered, and I got a notification that they've been shipped, so they should be in hopefully earlier than anticipated, um, so hopefully maybe by the end of the week. Uh, and we will be looking to do uniform sign-outs at practices uh, next week, the week of December 9th, um, where either Nick or myself will be at practices to help administer the sign-out of the uniforms where that player's parent or guardian must sign our form uh, so that they understand that if it's not returned at the end of the year, um, they will be charged the replacement fee for the uniform. Um, our t-shirts for our pre-K and K and first and second grade sessions were ordered today. So those will be in in plenty of time for the first session. Uh, basketballs for our pre-K and first and second grade, as well as those who chose to purchase one in grades three through six are going to be ordered tomorrow. I, I we received a quote today. Um, we are also going to be ordering uh, water bottles for those participants in grades three through six, similar to what we did for soccer. And those will be ordered and we'll have those in stock uh, well in advance at the end of the season. So that way they can be handed out in a more timely manner. And I think that's it for basketball. Thanks, Kevin. Any questions, comments? Um, just about the return uniforms. Yes. Are they going to be de delivered back to you? My, my experience is some, some different coaches had different emphasis on this. So I think I even, you know, I, somewhere along the way I had a uniform like all, win or all summer because it just, we never turned it in. Um, so are they going to, the idea if I turn my uniform in, I want to make sure I get credit for it so you're not chasing me. To keep, mm. keep the system as clean as possible. What's the mechanism? Who are they going to? give it to? Um, well, as far as I know, I don't know if a determination has been on, on that. I know we were discussing a couple options. I don't know, Nick, if you have any idea. Yeah, I think we want to give them multiple ways to enable returning it. Um, so Hoop Classic, I think, which I'm going to get to here, ends uh, March 21st. And the idea is to have all those uniforms back by the beginning of April. Um, just so you know, the longer it's gone, after that it can get forgotten about, lost, whatever. Uh, we want to really eliminate that possibility. Um, but at the same time, when they sign this, it is still their responsibility to get it back to us um, if they miss out on like a uniform return night, um, the last day of Hoop Classic, if they don't change out of them and give them to us in the building when they're there. That's probably the best time to do it. Um, we can take them, wash them, whatever we have to do. We're just really trying to eliminate the loss. We've, it's been a theme um, yeah. that we don't get all the uniforms back, so we really want to try to nip that as quick as we can. So. Is there any way to do like an end of the year, something? Yeah, we did a have them come back and and basically here's this at the end of the year party. The expectation is bring uniforms with you. Yep. So uh, last year we did sort of a uh, uniform return night at the gym where kids could come play pickup with their friends and whatnot. I think I believe you were there. Um, you took you know. I liked what you did. You know, you helped us out in a big way. You you actually collected the uniform for us, and you gave them to me on like a, in a bag, all looks like clean and everything. Which I don't see why that that should be on the coach too. The coaches should be able to email their team and say, "Hey, you know, I need the uniforms by a certain date," and <clears throat> they can turn them in. 
I mean, I had a list for you guys. I had, every, I think I was missing one uniform. Yep. Um, so, no, that worked out great, and I greatly appreciate your efforts in doing that. Um, but to that point of that uniform return night, it just wasn't greatly attended, um, as Nate can speak to as well. You know, we had ice cream there for the kids and whatnot. Um, for some reason, it just didn't attract much. Uh, I like your idea of the last event. You get yep. them there, like take them off, wear something else, yep. so they know that you're going to capture most of them. Right. Did you know who that that last uniform was? Who didn't turn yep. it in? Yeah, and yeah. They, I emailed the mom, and I don't know if she ever, but I told her she, that they right. needed to turn it into Parks and Rec. Right. That's the thing, because if you have 12 kids on the team and 11 bring them back and one doesn't, you don't want to be harassing those other 11. You want to, you know, find the person that isn't mm -hmm. complying and. Yeah, yeah, you take take a list. You because I know every player on my team what their number is. I went down. I had this yeah. number, this number. All right, I didn't have this one. So yeah, it's. Is there in this form you're talking about having them sign? Is there a penalty for not returning the uniform? There is. We're implementing the the cost of the uniform if we have to replace it. Is that new this year? It is. Okay. Yes. So that'll be part of the form that they read and sign when they when we issue it to them. Can you do that through the um with the online system? Because when they sign up for that, they put in credit card information, right? Is there a way to do it so that um, it's almost like a deposit, but you're not, next time do it as an authorization, that you're authorized when they check up to sign off. Part of that authorization is that that box check is authorizing you to bill their credit card for the cost of a uniform at the end of the season if it has not been returned. I don't think we have that capability through Rec Desk. Um, I can look into it more, but... For, for right now, if we can just have the paper and then uh, we'll bill them going into the next season if we don't see that uniform come back. And if they have an outstanding balance on their uniform going into registration, we'll go in and, and lock them out of being able to re-register for that same pro or actually the next sport program, whatever it is. Well, so if you're so leaving basketball and going into baseball, that might hinder you from being able to sign up for baseball. But if you put like just a one month window, because I would think the probability of getting the uniform back after a month goes down. So right. what if it says it has to be back by here or you'll be billed? That's kind of what we did. Uh, yeah, okay. The end of Hoop Classic is the 21st, and, I mean, it's a quicker turnaround than a month, but uh, we're hoping by the beginning of April we have all of the uniforms back. There's really no – that's, that's so yeah. a decent amount of time. There's no reason. It's pretty reasonable. Be. If you miss the uniform return night or whatever, you can still drop by the office and give it back to us. Yeah. So like, but even April – Or they can April even contact or me. Because yeah. I have no problem going to pick them up if I have to. So you could put that in there, too. I mean, right. either drop it off, or contact we'll me, it I'll go pick it up. You're a saint, Nate. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. but yeah, we want to definitely take as much responsibility away from the coaches as we can, the ones that go above and beyond like that to collect uniforms and stuff. Awesome. But you guys do quite a bit. So um, we definitely like to make it as easy as we can on the uniform return process. Good. Okay, thank you. Special events review. Yeah, just a quick wrap up. Uh, we had Veterans Day uh, remembrance on Veterans Day uh, earlier in November. It was a success. Uh, had well over 100 people attend that one. Uh, it was, you know, awesome respects paid by numerous people in town. We had a bunch of groups come in, so I want to thank uh, Jim Tomlinson, who was from the Legion. He spoke uh, at that event. Eric Gross did our national anthem, as he's done the past few years. He was excellent. Uh, even though he's sick, he performed well, and it was great. Uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, they all came and played a part in that as well, as always. So special thanks for all the contributions at that event. Um, Sit with Santa also this past weekend uh, was also successful. Um, again, dozens and dozens of families that just rolled through and met Santa Claus. It was great. Um, special thanks to Deer Deerfield Fire and Rescue for escorting him through town for the, uh, for the parade which was also excellent. Um, so that's pretty much it for those events. Uh, next one coming up, Winter Carnival is tentatively set for Saturday, January 25th. Weather permitting, of course, um, as you guys know, the last couple of years have kind of limited us to what we can do. Um, but we're going to look to shape things around the outdoors aspect of events again and uh, see what we get out of it. Uh, if we have to adjust on the fly within a couple of weeks prior, we will do that. But uh, planning on having a flyer with events out here in the next couple of weeks. Great. Nice job with those events. Thanks. I got one, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, skating. <laughs> I looked around at the skating area 
that we talked about by the fire station and I think it'll be a good place for next year but this year it's too late to, to get in there and clean it up um, it has to be mowed and raked out and stuff but there was water already in there so I think it's gonna hold water pretty well if we clean it up sometime during the late fall instead of trying to do it now so I have a feeling instead unless we want to spend some money on a rink that we may skip the ice rink this year and go for it next year unless there's a reason you guys we could spend the money and get one of those backyard kits or see if we can get it from Home Depot or something Did you ever, would you supposed to contact Home Depot <coughs> we're, we're gonna see if that worked I was gonna say I walked over and it just was weeded up you'd have to you got to mow it down and there's rocks. Get permission to get, and it was wet though when I looked. And it pre-snow, this is two weeks ago. Yeah, that's, um, I was there Sunday, so. So if the fire department's okay with it, I don't know if we could get something down there and through that. It looked kind of swampy. So, I'm not sure we can do it this year. No, I don't think we can do it now, especially with all this snow. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's the choice of the, the board will we want to hold off on an ice skating thing till next year and. Or see if we can get it donated. So we can get something donated. And is, is there, just to <coughs> remember the backyard party once where they had a really small rink and the little kids were all on there and they, they took turns and they were in there. The lots of adults were around doing other things, but almost like a kiddie pool kind of thing. If we bought a cheap rink and put it somewhere just to see what the attraction and interest was and to create the, you know, a, you know set it up for winter carnival and say, you know, spending not dollars, <coughs> but hundreds of dollars and just, you know, so we can get the 20 by 40 for like $250 as a kit. I mean, 20 by 40 is not very big, but it's big enough for what you're talking about. Yeah. You want to then that. You then, you, then you, you, you say, well, it didn't work here, and then maybe we move it, and then you, well, we get the water to there and how that works. So it might just help you with some of the mechanics of, of getting it up and running, you know, a very small scale. And then... Is a cheap way to do it is just four by fours, all right, as your base and then staple your plastic onto that just gives you enough of a limp to fill with water and then you put snow for your walls and that's a real cheap way in just and you're just four by fours because i'm not going to tip over and you don't have to put the problem we had though is that the plastic trying to take plastic together and keep it from leaking and i think the kit comes with a full sheet that's not yeah you know. you'd have to order the, the plastic <laughs> You're also dependent on snow in that situation where if you bought a kit it's going to work it might not be big no you don't well you know. I mean, four by four, you have enough on the edge, right? You get your ice. If you want to have big walls, you just <coughs> snow. But if not, you just you have an ice rink. And that's a cheap way to limp into something and maybe a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. But I would I agree that you want to order online like a, a roll of plastic that someone would deliver that yeah, it's like triple. You un open it. It's like a big no 20 seams. foot wide and then roll 60 foot wide, mm -hmm. or, and then buy 100 long. <coughs> Seems. Once you start getting to 100 feet, though, you get a real you get a hydraulic issue where the water's going to go, and then you're fighting. You'll have you'll have six feet on one end that will have nothing, and then you'll have water. You know that that's why I'm saying to keep it simple, low scale. Simple would be the, if we wanted to do it, just do the the tennis rink, or the tennis rink, the tennis court. Tennis court, right? Turn it into a rink for the winter. It's not over where the winter carnival is, but. Could probably throw some LEDs out there, run it off the building, and have a skate night out there with hot chocolate one time just to see if there's any interest in people skating. Um, I don't know how it would muck up Yanni's parking on Friday night, but mm. um, they, they might love you. They might not. Um, they might bring customers. Might. But that could be a that could be a real easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd still want to do, would you still need plastic out there or could you just flood that surface? Mm, you probably want plastic. <clears throat> Is there curbing out there around that tennis court? I think so. Flat. <clears throat> but then, you, then you'd have high walls. Wouldn't need snow. But if you had a kit, you could put it out there and try it. <laughs> and then you could leave it there for a week and Yanni says, you know, you're, you're stealing all my parking and then you can move it across it. You could do that and, and it's it's, it's oh, the saying nice. homemade's one thing but anyway. bigger is better okay what do we want to do here yeah. so you put a sprinkler out there and just let it sprinkle and it'll freeze itself <laughs> <laughs> 
How about we ask Nick to go ahead and price something that's that's cheap and easy, whether it's a roll of whatever, and and just just to come back and say, you know, for, you know, for a few hundred dollars, you know, is it worth a shot? And then we need somebody obviously to help put it together and fill it with water. You're talking about doing it out here? Well, anywhere. That's what I'm saying. Is if you have if it's small enough, you could you could do it anywhere. Jeff's already checking out prices now. <laughs> okay. But you would need lighting if you wanted to do it at night. We've inquired with Primex. Um, I haven't heard back yet, but I'm sure they're going to have rules for what they'd like to see if they're going to cover an ice rink in town, too. Um, so that might be something that we should uh, wait on before we make any rash decisions. But uh, Did we look at last year we had to have a sign that said skate at your own risk and stuff. I know there's requirements that you checked and yeah. we had to have a sign that we put up, skate at your own risk and... Correct. But we talked to another town recently that thinks there might be, you know, some more regulations that we should be abiding by if we're going to go ahead and do this. Okay. So, yeah. so you're waiting to hear back from Primax? Correct. Okay. Are, is, are there other towns that, that have skating rinks? Yeah. Uh, Chester is actually one of the ones that uh, Kevin met with this uh, past week at a collaborative meeting that we go to once a month with the other rec towns and um, they have one so that's how it kind of came up and where did they do it on uh, tennis court or oh, I, I'm not really sure where they do it they they just had experience with <coughs> knowing that there's a bunch of guidelines so whether in fact they in fact have one or they looked into it themselves and then found out that it wasn't suitable for them um, but they mentioned that you know you might want to look into that before you start purchasing anything. Make sure it's something that um, they'll cover and that you can meet their needs. Sounds like it makes sense to check that situation out first. Okay, so Nick will take care of that. Yes, sir. Thank you. You could also get a hold of Joe Manzi. They did it down in Hampton last year. Yeah, didn't he get something donated? Yeah, from Home Depot. And I think they did it on tennis on their tennis courts, but they have like a double set or something. Yeah, because he got the wood and all that donated. <coughs> right from Eric uh, Exeter has one too. I'll check. Okay. All right. So we'll hear back from Nick on that. I'm on it. Deerfield Hoop Classic. Uh, just a quick update on that. I can't remember if I mentioned this at one of our previous meetings, but we have moved it up this year. Um, looking at March 6th through March 21st as our finish date. Uh, therefore, that moves up everything in the whole process of organizing it. Uh, registration deadline will be Friday, February 7th this year. That's most critical for out-of-towners, um, not necessarily ours because we pretty much take care of the registration for Hoop Classic at this point, uh, but we will be in touch with our Deerfield teams too to see who's planning on participating uh, past the regular season. Um, so with that said, I did blast out via Constant Contact. That's our new little uh, gizmo that we have uh, in the office with a subscription. Um, to all of our previous um, Hoop Classic teams that have come from different towns and uh, just let them know uh, about the, the date range and uh, all the information, rules and stuff like that so that they're aware and they can get a jump on it because uh, as soon as the new year turns around, we're going to have about a month to get this tournament filled again, um, which is a pretty quick turnaround compared to years past. Um, so that was out on November 18th. And, uh, yeah, just want to let you guys know that we're working on it. Any feedback from any of those contacts so far? Does it interfere with any other tournaments that teams are involved with that travel? or? We've kind of checked uh, with other towns that we know run the tournaments already, and um, one of which is willing to work with us because it does overlap about by a week, I believe it is. Um, and the other major one that's in this area doesn't conflict at all. So, you know, we think it's a win-win to have this moved up right next to the basketball season and not give people time to kind of burn out and forget about the sport before changing to baseball, so. Very much managed. Yep. But not so much for tonight's discussion, but as far as when you say getting into financing that is whether the DFL teams, how, how they finance their participation. And just to you know, maybe look at what, what happened last year and the overall you know, money collected from the teams and all that. Because I know that was the major annual discussion. annual volunteer discussion? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Not tonight, but just <laughs> right. that, as we get closer in time, that, yep. that will be a, a real topic. It, it would be actually nice if you could dovetail that with the uniform um, 
signing or whatever to say that there is an expectation that you will be volunteering. Right. I know it's a sore spot for some, but. <laughs> Next time. Now looking at the financials for the Hoop Classic from 2018 to 2019, uh, they're much improved in 19. Did that mean that you guys uh, had a lot more volunteers than you had the previous year? I don't think um, so. So I don't think we had more volunteers. We just had more <coughs> shifts covered by the same people. Um, that was, that was. Uh, yeah, uh, and does, does Nick's salary count towards that? Because he wasn't here because of his dad's thing. So that could have been. No, well, we saved. Okay, no, that so that doesn't have any effect on it. Okay, because no. I know Kevin and I were here. Yeah. I think every single. I think I might have missed one night. Yeah. But Kevin and I were there every single night. Um, Terry was there a few times. Jeff was there. I think Erica was there a lot. And then, Tom uh, was there a lot. How did you know the Hellings? Hellings. The Hellings were. Katie. Huge. And Katie. It was. It really was the same faces. You're basically yeah. the same I mean, six people. Just, or yeah, six you, five or six families. Yeah, you no, probably had seven, eight, nine, ten people at most, and they were just all the same people. <coughs> I know that your salaries aren't, but if if there were staff that worked, yeah, did you uh, pay so, them overtime, and was that um, charged? We had two staff? of our after school staff that helped out a bit, um, and they got they would have gotten paid, got paid out of right? that line, yeah. Um, yeah. and that was taken care of. So that they sh their payment should have already come out of that line. I worked with Pete on making sure that their hours came out of the Hoop Classic line. Cool. Anything else on Hoop Classic? Thanks, guys. Upcoming projects. Uh, so at the last <coughs> meeting, I think it was maybe Terry or somebody asked for a list of um, some things that we see foresee coming up. Uh, within the department, things that we might have to spend money on since we've spent a lot in the last year or two. Um, so I came up with a list. Um, one thing we've been talking about around the building uh, directly related to safety is the tree trimming right along the line, the property line. It's actually right on the other side of the fence. Um, but there are some dead trees and we've had them fall in the past. And, to try to get ahead of that, I've got some quotes, and it looks like it's going to sit around $3,500, um, regardless of who we go through, to get all the trees trimmed the way they should be, or removed in some cases because they're completely dead. Are they on park and rec the property, or are they on someone else's property? Technically, our pr they're on somebody else's property. They they live on that property, but they go up and they hang over. But that's and not your. That's their liability. From a, so that's it was it's so that's if you get it's, permission to, we would have to get permission to you trim have to get permission but also it's their liability to maintain those right like because if they're a safety issue for you guys we're dealing with it with our property but trees on our property it fell on someone else's and it comes down to us if it damages their fence or stuff so we have to take the tree down so it's just like if if it's your fence and it's dead and it's ha overhanging you can re talk to them but you shouldn't eat the cost for it. They should eat the cost for removing it. Just trying to be proactive. And no, I know. No, I, <laughs> I think I'm proactive with doing it, but like, if it's a dead tree that's going to fall and there's cost to it, you're technically not, I don't believe, liable for it. Right, but I think in this instance, just a letter to them saying, we need to trim this line. We're willing to pay for it. We need your permission to do it. And right. Instead of getting into that, you have to pay for it. So right. ultimately, it's the kids that are in our care. Yeah. So yeah. <coughs> yeah. I mean, you get a if they say you can't cut it, then we may have to push it and say, then you need to it's trim your trees issue. back. Right. But I think a letter to the neighbor first saying this is what we want to do. Right. Which field is this? This is right out uh, George B. White. Oh. So okay. They're yeah. all yeah. up and down the line. There's a few hazards, potential hazards. hazards. Um, so that was one. Uh, we've talked about a lot about ADA over at Hartford Brook. Um, so I've had a couple of rough estimates that say that might be around $5,000 when it comes to that point. Um, so we're not there yet. Um, I had hoped to have that be well into that this fall before the, the snow fell. But um, 5000 like to complete the ADA 
You're just with the pavement so, and stuff, yeah. And, but then we're going to get the 25 if we invest five more? Um, that won't be the only expense to that, but yeah. Um, <laughs> we have to be 100% compliant to receive 100% of that grant money. So um, that 5K is the pavement part? Just the pavement part. Um, you still have to do the walkway and all that? That's further down my list, um, which I don't have a, an accurate estimate for. Um, I guess I can skip down there. Uh, I've been in touch with a town engineer, um, and he actually came out and visited and kind of laid out a couple of different options, to which I went back to the, the, the uh, Land, Water, and Conservation Fund where the grant is from um, and basically talked to them. Um, and they, it's, it's, ADA is kind of funny. It's kind of up to your discretion and how you see you should comply with the certain rules. It's still very new stuff. Uh, even though it's all in writing and there are pages and pages about it, it's really up to the town about how you want to comply with certain rules uh, within the ADA. Um, so what I, I'm doing is I'm trying to get back in touch uh, with the engineer to kind of come up with the final decision of how we how we can efficiently and you know most cost effectively cover our compliance through this aspect of the ADA um, because we need to have some type of a path that leads from that parking area. Um, the handicapped parking area that doesn't exist but will exist um, to the other side of the complex, which is the softball side. Um, so how do you create that? Um, that's what we're battling right now. So that will cost something at some point, I'm not sure. Um, but that's necessary to achieve compliance with it. Did the engineer do a survey at the, the site to see? He did. Make I met, recommendations? I met with him and um, he did recommend that it goes be, uh, runs behind the fencing um, all the way around um, from, from the right field of the baseball side, um, starting right behind it, um, and just running kind of all the way around behind the fence until you get to the softball side. Um, so that's and how we do that, how we reinforce the ground there, and all that is kind of up to us is what it sounds like from the state um, and the, the rules that are there. So there's a lot of work to be done to kind of figure out, you know, how can we do it and for as little money as we can uh, to basically play by their rules. So, what about the parking area and stuff? Uh, parking area, I don't have the exact dimensions on it, but that but he's, same he's pave looked it, at it. Pave it. Um, uh, I can't remember the exact. If it was a 20 by a 20, but That's the spots right, have to yeah. be certain width right. by a certain depth, and then you have to have the uh, what do they call it the uh, the gore in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, so that all has to be laid out in signage and everything, too. Oh, good. I, I agree, Nick, that when um, there's, a, there's a lot of subject to sort of local interpretation when you do something like this. Um, I still believe if you went to like the UNH, the Institute of Disability, or Grand State Independent Living, they, they build like ramps on people's homes and they do a lot of work because whether it's 100% compliant, I still want to get in my house and people will, will, will make that leap of yeah it's compliant because it works um if you had an engineer saying this is what you wanted to do and you had somebody like them sort of as a consultant or just even like a letter of of like approval saying like yeah this is what <coughs> we, would, we would we would approve this that might help our case and right. say you know that we're not independent uh people that don't understand this but the people that actually have disabilities or work with people with disabilities on an ongoing basis they would love to hey it's not perfect but i can get my wheelchair to that side right i i I approve and that might be what we need then when when it's all done and all the investments are made to say hey you know we've got we've got people in the industry that are supporting what what we've done here so I don't, I don't know if there's somebody you can you know we can contact I, I could go back and um, look for some old contacts or whatever there's just somebody to, to consult it and they'll probably do it for free or, or very very cheap if they do it at all because th their goal is to make the world more accessible right Um, related to that point, that there's fencing that we've decided that we wanted to put in around the playground too, um, in that area that we'll have to work. It's kind of step by step, so you want the pavement there first, so you know what you're working around, and then have that fencing put in there after. Which I did talk to AQ Fence about earlier in the year. Um, they quoted us just under six thousand for that, but I think now that we know the p pavement layout, we might be able to get away with less, um, and how that fence is going to run. Um, they just we're gonna have to get somebody back out once the pavements down to figure out exactly what we need to fence off um, but that was at the time what that expense was a um, couple others that 
you know, deserve attention. Baseball field restoration at Bicentennial Field. This past year, we did the softball field for uh, $1,350 uh, with golf skates. He did a great job leveling that off. He got rid of rocks that were there, serious hazards. Um, so that's going to be playable this year, as where last year it was in pretty bad shape. Um, so if we do that again with the baseball side to get that all squared away, we can look to spend about the same, uh, if not less, because it's less material he has to move around. Um, on the baseball skin. Um, infield mix at both fields, um, specifically the softball side, uh, softball side at Hartford Brook and the baseball field at Bicentennial. Um, they're going to need mo new material um, after we skin the tops of them, um, you know, just to get, get them up level with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the exterior of the grass that's around it um, and make it playable. Um, so for that, looking around 2400 if we get uh, whatever the material cost was for each field um, times two, so 2400 And the last one I have is if we remulch all the playgrounds again next year. We did skip a year last year. We found that it was a little bare going into the following year. Um, so maybe just some kind of replenishment with the mulching. Um, if we get what we got last year, that's $1,900 for 100 cubic yards. Another thing to keep in mind, we now have a third playground. Um, so every time we do that, the expense is going to go up a little bit. But um, right around 20 grand is, and not necessarily all to be spent this year, um, especially with all the ADA steps that we have to take. But those are upcoming expenses that we foresee at some point. As I say, what about we talked about this a while ago? Um, so you're talking about the infields from baseball perspective, but yeah. from other sports or even baseball running in the outfield. What about like before Hartford Brook? I mean, you and I were out there that. Field's going to hell fast. In the outfield, it's bumpy already. The grass is awful. Yep. Just within a year. Mm -hmm. So I, I know there's the infield side of it, but there's the whole field side of it. Like Bicentennial prefer not to even play on because it's like, think about playing pool where you roll a ball over lasagna noodles. That's pretty much playing over here. So like, what about just a plan so that make playable fields from rolling a ball, like for soccer or even when you're running? I know that I've been out there and I wouldn't, want to run in the outfield. Sure. It's just lumpy. Absolutely. So I mean, there's this one that needs a boatload of work, but Hartford Brook, so much money has gone into that. There's the tuck, truck tires and stuff starting to settle. Is there maybe put a plan, could we put a skim coat on before that goes, like mm -hmm. preventative men, uh, maintenance? Yeah, we can certainly do that. Maybe seeding it too, so you don't lose all your grass. There's a lot of crabgrass out there already. Sure. Yeah, we can certainly do that. I've tried to focus this list on things I see happening really pretty soon within the next year. Uh, or maybe a little after, you know, that's going to make these fields playable as far as like the infields and stuff like that. Yeah, it's not going to be perfect. When have we had perfect fields? When was the last time we had perfect fields here? But one thing at a time, um, you know, and then obviously the drainage and everything at Bicentennial. The cool thing about the guy with golf scapes is he does golf courses for a living. He does drainage systems and stuff like that. So he can also perform an assessment while he's out there. Uh, he didn't do it during the softball side because he was strict on time, but um, he has all those capabilities to kind of figure out what drainage pattern would help the field, all that type of stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's the drainage. But this is just making it playable level, sure. right? Yep. Because you can't, you can't. Problem mm -hmm. things you can't teach a kid how to pass if the ball can't be passed without it bouncing everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, from a playable perspective, they're not playable. Yeah. Right. Oh. So that from that side, they're not. This field's not playable. Hartford Brook is getting not playable, right? Like if I can't pass the ball to Jeff without trying to predict where the ball's going to bounce off of what bump, that's not really a playable field, right? And so that's why I was like, so I get it, but it's it's not playable, like from that perspective. And so I just looking at your maintenance, part of it is that it, whether it's reseeding on an annualized basis to a degree or overseeding in the fall, but. That's a huge undertaking, though. I mean, I to get those fields like that, you're going to have to redo the irrigation, right? You're going to have to put a field out of use for a season where they're used. We, we tried. We were gonna, we wanted to shut that down to not use that, but we don't have enough fields. Hartford Brook, though, right. when we talk to the guy, you pop the heads and he just marks them, and they can level it without pulling the irrigation. Because you're not talking at Hartford Brook, because it's not that bad yet. You're just talking about you're filling in the settlement. Overseeding it. And... and, and Essentially, maybe burning it in the spring to get the grass down, then skim coating it, and then rolling it so that it just levels it out, which is a, and then most of it will grow right back through, and then you overseed it. But that should be just a skim coat and then popping heads. This one over here, 
they would have to figure out how bad this is and figure out the drainage. That's a bigger project, but Hartford Brook before it gets too bad. Mm -hmm. it just, I'm not talking this one, this one's a project. But Hartford Brook before, I mean, we were looking at it and that is beautiful a year ago. And I know there was the issue with the irrigation and just weeds popped up and then people drove over it with the truck and rutted it up and mm -hmm. and then just settles, right? The material that's in there. But if figure out what that is to skim it and keep it nice and before it gets too far. Nick, I wanna say thanks for doing this because this helps us plan. I mean, we have only yeah. so much money and the, that's money is shrinking. So, you know, how, so maybe we add a few <coughs> more things to this list and then we sort of prioritize them and say, well, you we can do this, that, and the other thing. Question for Jeff. We talked about a Warren article perhaps for 10 grand for a program or special events like Old Home Day and that sort of thing. So people have a sense for wanting us to continue that, they would finance it. Is it maybe, and I know in the, there were some hot foot brook uh, Warren articles that had gone in. Would, would it make sense instead of that or in conjunction with that to do something to say these are project, you know, small project based things, just, you know, like the, you know, the roof for the George B. White building or whatever might go, but to say, you know, tree trimming and and, and uh, you know, uh, ADA compliance, um, uh, fencing around the new, you know, uh, 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 playground that we, we got a huge donation on. That type of thing to say it's only gonna cost you 20 grand or if it's 17 grand, you know, we, 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 we show that. It's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thought um, because then we would, we would have another place to get money. I don't think there are grants that we could write for something like this. I mean, maybe the ADA piece, we could find some more help with that. But So just to just prove the thought as we come up for election season, um, you do run the opposite risk, though. If it gets shot down, then can we go ahead and do it on our own? So there's risk there, right? That's why the budget, we included the money in the budget for Old Home Day and special events. So it's in the budget. It's not a Warren article. We decided that at the meeting, I think, and then when you came to Selectman, we put it into the, we increased the budget by... 5,200. Yeah. yeah. And the chance you have is you put a Warren article in and you, you can't spend money on that if it fails. It's a, a year, right? Yeah. So I guess, you know, we roll up our sleeves and how do we find 20 grand? Because, you know, these, these are real things, you know, fields need to be playable. I agree with that. You know, trees can't fall on kids. Um, you know, that type of thing, you know, we, um, so. The other thing you could do maybe is a Warren article that asks for half the funding and then it opens it up that allows you to spend half of that. You know, say you want 20 grand to do tree cutting and irrigation and field overlay with 10 of it paid for out of the revolving account, 10 of it from taxpayer money. And if they kill it, it's, you still can spend the 10 out of the revolving, but you just don't have 20. Or you could ask for 40. Well, what would the time frame be? You know I mean? So, I mean, if we, if we, <clears throat> we can't, so we couldn't spend the money ever, the extra 10 grand, so the next season, if we next wanted year. to. It's a year. It's a it's year. The, so it's, it's the cycle. budget year. But if you asked for 40, and you said it's 40 and we're gonna ask for 20, you could still spend 20, and potentially could get 20. My concern, Jeff, is we don't have 20 to spend now. We're, we we said at one point, I, I just very unofficially, we we wanted to be at 100 grand in that revolving account, and it's it's well below that now. And the prognosis is that it's better to be below that because a lot of people don't like that revolving yeah. account. So when you're up at 100, they want it. They don't. I think if we're we're heading in a better direction because it's not really high, and if we can get the Warren articles to pass and help with maintenance of fields. You still have your buffer and... I think part of it too is with the planning and just knowing your finances, you don't have to have such a big buffer, right? If you know where your money's coming from and where you're gonna spend it and what your plan is, you don't have to have that big right. cash there. But without any planning, it feels great to have a big buffer below us. But if you know that after school's covering itself, it's not losing money, that's there. Yeah. How low would you be comfortable with it going overall? The revolving account? Yeah. I think if you kept it at 50. 50? Okay. I, I respect that. I, I, you, know, you know, you don't want to go to zero because then you won't no. be able to buy baseball no, no. bats. And, well, we'd you know. have to cut programs if you went to zero. Right. Well, at 50. Okay, so. Well, his November expenses were, what, 46? So that's one month burn. That might be tight. Could be. 
You know what I mean? Like just from a burn perspective of the only one month's money in the bank, you know, maybe two months would be a good target to have. That I mean, it's still. Well, that's right. About that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just I would, I'm just looking at it from what's your burn rate. Having one month in the bank's pretty tight in case something happens. So would you, you know. But the other thing is, what would you have in a month that would be that kind of an expense? I guess that's the way I would look yeah. at it. It's, it's, it's. I guess we're the, a, what's a source of funds. It's an emergency fund, basically. If we need it for, yeah. if we had to buy a seventy thousand dollar vehicle, then yeah. But I don't ever see this board ever having to do something like that. Yeah. It's operating money, so you can buy. It, it, it really, is, yeah. You know, so you can buy, you, you know, buy baseball tickets ahead. You know, and, and then get reimbursed for it. So baseball bats and put soil on the infield and little things like yeah. that. But you're you're generating revenue too. So uh, and that's something we should think about because I know when I asked you informally at one point, you thought it was it might be might be twice that. But you know, we're all just kind of guessing here. I think. Yeah. Well, I think with all the help Eric and Dwight have done with the finances, yeah. you can see it now and. And I'm, and I'm just seeing us moving away from a starting point. I don't know if the starting point was good or bad. That's all I'm seeing is that. We, so I'm not saying, you know, if we have to spend 20, we spend 20. That that could, you know, and maybe we we spread it out over time. Right. So that you do certain things in the spring, fall, and to to, to meet, stay ahead of the need. That the way you can do bids and get best price and. Yeah. So I mean I don't want to make a motion, but maybe a suggestion that we, we, we formalize this a little bit, maybe put it in a spreadsheet, and, and uh, next time next meeting we can have it. And say these are so projects, and then we can kind of decide, yeah, let's do this one, do this one, and uh, you know if that works for you, because you need this stuff done. We want to help you get it done. Good idea. Okay. All right, you return with that list and. Well, what's the idea on a warrant article? Do we want to consider a warrant article for help on maintenance of fields? Did, did you say, though, that because last time we talked about a warrant article for Old Home Day and special events, did you say that there was something at the selectmen's meeting to put money in a budget? We, we increased the parks and rec budget by $5,200. So we don't need that warrant article anymore for no, we don't for want We didn't want the warrant article because if it failed, we couldn't, couldn't do it. We couldn't do it. Okay. But if the budget didn't pass, is that not available then? The fifty two hundred? Right. Yeah. So that's But w so we'd pay we'd have to do it out of the revolving. <clears throat> right. I was gonna say one of the other things that if you're talking about the budget, like so for the your sports, like one of the things we worked hard at was getting soccer to break even again and then also budgeting for future capital equipment and stuff. So part of the the eighty fund, like soccer is what, forty 200 in the black. So from a planning perspective, and actually that's $4,200 stacked there from soccer money to budget. So having you have that transparency to be able to understand here's what to spend versus here's what Hoop Classic raised to pay for something else, like what's already allocated, right. which I think they're just thinking about that, gives you that transparency, which I think will help you then say, what do you want for your, your unallocated funds? As opposed to here's what your balance is, but what's your unallocated balance, if mm -hmm. that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, from a business perspective. But then you can start to say, yeah, we may have 80 in there, but 65 of it's allocated to other programs already. So there's really, really don't have this much money to play with because it's, it'd be Robin Peter to pay Paul at that point, and whatever you're paying for may not be bringing in revenue. Like that would be just another thing to think about because all of that money that's in the account may not be just there to be spent if you brought it in for some other purpose. Yeah, Jeff, what's that deadline if you wanted to introduce a warrant article? I'm trying to find it. It's coming it's coming up, right? It's, it's in like, January. Yeah. I, I think it would be smart. I can't find it right now, but um, I think it would be smart for us to put together a warrant article for field maintenance and you know, even just do twenty thousand dollars and Ten of it's from revolving and ten from town. And not for the special events, but to focus on actually like special uh, events is covered. That's in the budget. Old home day and special events. That's the fifty two hundred we did. But the fifty two but do we have a budget? 
If it passes. If it passes. If it, oh, if you're saying oh, now, this, this upcoming budget, it's in there, and that's, but it, okay, but right. that, they may not be for or against that, but the budget itself, that there are issues, and we had issues with that in the past. Okay. All right. So, so if we do field, I, I know when I saw, our, you know, as a private citizen, whatever, you know, that when infrastructure was needed, roofs and windows and that sort of thing, I was always prone to, yeah, you got to, you, you have to do that sort of work. So we get a lot of money invested in this now. We get a lot of volunteers out there working. I, I get a sense that people would, would support maintaining what we've already started. But that's just my opinion. And, you know, so, so maybe we come back in January with, with, you know, we think about that now. We come back at the next meeting and uh, just, when, when's the next meeting? Check, yeah, I'd have to, uh, Nick, if you can check with, check with John when the date is for Warren article. Okay. And I don't know if somebody wants to try to draft one that uh, covers it. We may have to have it submitted before our next meeting. Uh, I think we talked last time that we really would need to do the marketing around it. You know, what would it cover? Why is it needed? You know, break out all the things that are going to be covered, how much they cost, that, that kind of stuff. But this is a great start to, like, showing costs and stuff. Yeah, but this Warren article, if we just say, yeah, it's for field maintenance, well, which fields, why, you know, yeah, it's sell it to people. Yeah. So I mean, everyone's going to say campaign. Hartford Brook is, you know, we've spent all this money. Why do we need to spend For more money? Can we send Jeff on our campaign trail to... to, to, mm, to mm, it's a double-edged sword. myself up there. Good conversation. Well, does somebody want to take a shot Motion at putting the Warren article? Huh? It's a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'm kidding. Jeff, I'll, 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 I'll check in with you on that. Okay, if you don't mind. I mean, I can write a little bit, So, if, but I don't really know. You, I, I could follow some template, but what it should say, the essence, that, that's where I get stuck. Is, I mean, what is there a way to... I'll try to draft something up and send it out as a starter. Okay. Jeff, do we need, like, notes? So just... Is there a way to figure out how big that field is and just say for a guesstimate, if we top dressed it with on average an inch and a half of loom, call someone out say, what would it cost you to come out and do something like that? This <clears> much <throat> square footage, inch and a half to come out essentially just. Well, he's done that. And again, if you're going to, he's going to add a couple more to that list, a couple yeah, more well, maintenance items. He's talking about outfield, the well, yeah. grass area. What are we talking about including in this trying to budget article, everything in. The like, 20, the projects that you just listed or these new because, ones we just talked about? So Jeff, my thing is ask, put the bigger number here and then ask for half of it and then you can pick what half you want to spend on. Dangerous. You're too high and it won't go. What? Yeah. Well, not too high, but it's just being like, here's the stuff that has to happen. and have, But have it, like Eric said, line itemed out of here's what it is, so it's not just this number, it's like, here's this, this is leveling in fields this. Basically, maintaining the fields after settlement from here, leveling this, and then you line an item it all out, and here's the total. And we're looking at throwing half of it in, we're asking the town to pay for half. I think Terry was on the right track of prioritizing out. things and really deciding what is major for right now, and try to get that taken care of, and then you know, whatever can wait till next year. Maybe you do it again. I don't know. But you have, you have numbers for the paving and the and the what? What do you have numbers for? That would be what I would put in the Warren article at this point. Yeah, basically everything. Um, the the paving was kind of like a word of mouth thing from one person, but the tree trimming I've talked to three different companies on. Um, you know, I have quotes for um, infield mix and the restorations at Bicentennial Field. Fencing, I can get three quotes on, no problem. Yeah, I don't. I don't you don't need three at this point, just one. To but just to kind of like if number, make a figure. How much money we need? We're not awarding a <coughs> right. work to anybody. Yeah, I mean he's he's got it there, twenty grand. But it was paid Maybe you fencing. could you could ask your guy that did the infield what his if he'd give you an estimate to overlay a field and restore it or something like that. Right. I'm sure he could give you a number. Yep. Have that square footage. Yeah. Okay, so Jeff and Terry will work on a potential Warren article. Information from Nick. And yeah. you'll continue to gather <coughs> estimates for these items, and we'll revisit them at the next meeting, prioritize them, and 
have a list of what things could cost. I think put your marketing story around it too. Just like you've spent money on this, have these numbers that you started pulling together, Erica, this is what we spent it on. We've drained this account down. We can't drain it down anymore. Jeff, we've already agreed you're the guy to sell it for us. I'm not selling it. I'm just telling you. <laughs> that's his marketing story. He's going to put a story together. But put it together for selling it and what your story's going to be. I would think have that thought through. Because that's your justification of like, here's this is my bottom line. I, I have one month in the bank. And I can't, this has to be done. We can't take out of this account and mm -hmm. what have you spent it's drawn down what a hundred grants a year yeah I think that's that's an important part of the story is we've spent a lot already out of the fund we've gone from uh, the end of 2017 at a hundred and forty eight thousand down to 81 so that's uh, sixty six thousand and what do we accomplish for that, you know, all of what? these? List of items. Yeah. Yeah. And so these are the great things that we did with this money. And to continue to do these, you know, we can't, there's no place to rob it from anymore. And, and this is the things that are left to button this up. That's, I mean, I think that's the story is telling people you've done some great things, showing them what you've done, that it's not a waste of money, but can't take money if there's no money there to do these things. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe even pictures um, of what you've done show that we, the work you've done, but for the new stuff, pictures of the situations that exist, you know, the, the trees or um, I, I think the story around the ADA compliance is a good one. Um, the fact that we can't get this grant until this work is done, right. you know, is an important piece. Um, and then, you know, just the status of the fields. This is what a lot of our kids play on. And, and this might be an ad hoc committee, but, you know, the upcoming projects to get us over the hump and get us into a system that, you know, to, so I guess Jeff and I are part of that, that group at this point, maybe you a little bit with the Warren article. Okay. I you apologize, I'm gonna have to leave here in a minute. I have yeah. a child to go collect, but I know we're getting close. I think if you put together a, a bullet, something that yeah. can go on Facebook. Yes, that's exactly that, what I was thinking. It's the only and place you can. Put pictures up there. And, that's you know. where you're getting everybody. Nobody's coming to meetings. Nobody's right. paying attention. Right. You know, you have these wasted town meeting in February and March to talk about the budget. Nobody comes. It's, it's useless. So I think the media is the only place to get it out there. And word of mouth. <clears throat> you guys talking to people and selling it. Good. Anything else? Anybody? Motion to adjourn. Second. Not no. yours. Those in favor? You stole it. No. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Stepping on Nate's toes there, buddy.